Welcome back to the second video in this Yamaha four-stroke outboard engine series. In the last video, we identified a stumble that's hurt it idle as well as the entire RPM range. It was decided after other investigations that we'd be removing these carburetors. So we went through all of the steps in an orderly fashion to take apart all the pieces that would be required to get to the carburetors in accordance with the manual removing linkages and electrical connections and bolts and other pieces until the entire carburetor and air silencer pack could be safely removed from the engine. Then we closed up all the ports with clean paper towels, took stock of everything that we had done, and then closed this cover to move on to the carburetors, which we'll now be focusing on in part two, so let's get started. We have the carbs out on the table and we're gonna call them out as from the top one and two and three and four for this video. But before I start, I wanna know the positions of all the pilot screws before I touch anything else so I could write them down and know for my records if they were right or wrong with this carburetor in its current condition. So I'm making a mark where the screw head is and I'm gonna turn it all the way in to soft seat. Half, one, half, two, and then I got an eighth after that. So it's two and an eighth turns. I repeated the exact same process with the other three carburetors. It should have been two and a quarter plus or minus a half. So all four were within specification. Now I'm gonna open up all four bowl drains to make sure there are no surprises waiting for me by looking at the back of the screws. I'm using an eight millimeter socket and what I'm looking for is like green or discoloration or sludge or whatever on the back of any one of these screws to make sure that maybe the carb doesn't need to be pre-soaked or something, that there's something terrible in here. And this one looks just fine. We'll check the other three. And this one seems okay. And this one looks good too. And this one looks just fine. So I'm satisfied that there's nothing catastrophic in the bowls. Next, I'm gonna remove the accelerator pump. It's held on with these two screws over here. And I'm just gonna break tension on the screws first. I'm not gonna remove them. Now moving on to the second one. This linkage between the cobs obstructs the linkage for the accelerator pump, so I'm going to remove it now by pulling up on each individual cob. We can see that it snaps off its plastic, just gently lifting. I can pull it off each one. Here's the second cob, and now the first cob. The linkage is removed. And now the accelerator pump linkage is unobstructed. So I gently pry it up with a screwdriver to pop it out of the carb. And now it's removed. At this point, I remove the screws from the accelerator pump the rest of the way. And I gently lift it up off of the mount. But what I'm going to have to do is remove each of the four hoses that are connected to the carburetors to remove the accelerator pump. We can see them here. And they just pop right out of a brass fitting on the carb, no problem at all. So I pull all four of them out now. It's a bit of an exercise to push them through the holes in this bracket because the ends are deformed but rolling the ends around in your finger to make them round again makes them easier to push back through. With that, the whole accelerator pump can now be removed with the four hoses, and we can immediately see that one hose is impinged, and it's a lot shorter than it should have been. Maybe it was damaged and they cut it short and put it back on, but we see that where it's impinged, there is a big hole and quite possibly a big vacuum leak already identified. There's that big hole. So that's no good. I'll have to address that. But I'm going to immediately put the two screws for the accelerator pump back in the bracket so I don't lose them. It's just something I do. And we're ready to remove the air silencer now. And we can see that they're held on by these long bolts on both sides. And the bracket that it holds is designed to impinge this wire. We can see right here where it's held in place. But not only do these bolts hold on the silencer, they come through the carbs and hold on the brackets on the other side as well. So they're essentially holding everything together. As we did in the last video, we're gonna loosen from the middle outward. And this will be accomplished with a 10 mil swivel, just breaking tension from the middle outward, as I said. Now with the tension released, I'll remove each bolt one at a time. It also has this washer that goes inside the plastic. I'll be removing those two, flipping it over to do the other side. Once the last one is removed, everything will just fall apart. And there's the back plate. Lift up now and have a quick look at this. 
dirty on one side, and we could see this is held together with these two plastic rivets. It's got four O-rings. We'll clean it and deal with it later. Now we're going to pull the air box away from the carbs. There's also a plate in between there. We'll have a look at that air box. We see that there are four O-rings on that air box. This plate also held the accelerator pump and impinges this cable. I removed the cable now to release the plate. This will be cleaned and dealt with later. Now we're just dealing with the carbs. We'll bring it forward as we're going to remove the fuel hoses now to disconnect them. And we see this hose right here. This was our top line taped and it went to this white connector. And the other hose goes to this black T connector. The black one we'll deal with first terminates here in carb four and then comes up to carb three and terminates. So we're going to cut this cable tie now at carb four. And then to cut the cable tie, go into carb three off this T fitting. And now we're going to disconnect it from carb four. And now on to carb three. Yeah, that right there is not supposed to happen. That's not good. This carb is going to need some repairs, but we're going to move on right now. So I'm going to pull the other side out of carb three. And now this black hose, lower hose, is now released from the carburetors. Moving on to the one with the white connector connected to carb three here. And then it also connects on the carb two. So I'll clip that now. And we're just going to pull it off of carb three's T fitting. And now pull it off of carb two. Now the white hose is removed. A small hose connects the fitting from carb two to carb one. So I'm going to clip that off now from carb two. And that should separate two from one. We also have the cold start lines going from three to four. And we can see the cold start valve on three right here, feeding down. And on one, feeding down from one to two. This one, we saw the press fitting is broke, so it just falls out. So this carb four is disconnected from three, which is now disconnected. And one and two are loose, so this pulls out. That's the cold start valve line now disconnected. And we just need to disconnect the fuel line now from the T fitting. And one and two disconnected. All four carbs are now disconnected from one another. The silencer and the two brackets are brought over to the sink where they're washed with soap and water just to clean them out because I want to put them off to the side and they're all oily and greasy. I'll leave these pieces out in the sun so they can dry out. So this piece right here we already saw was broken and I want to remove that brass fitting from the hose. What I quickly realized is somebody had actually attempted to glue all of this together and the more I tried to remove this the more I run the risk of damaging that piece which is not a replaceable item. So I ended up cutting it out of the hose because I could replace the hose and it was so glued in that even with the hose cut it was still problematic to remove this because it was just stuck to it. I spent quite a bit of time trying to remove this from an already cut hose. That's how bad it was. This is pretty shady repair, but this piece can now be repaired. We're going to come back to it later to fix all this. So I got carbs one, two, and three grouped together, and I'm going to move them all to the back because we're only interested in carb four. Now I'm going to remove that already loosened bowl drain screw and empty this fuel into my tractor's fuel tank. It'll burn anything. These four screws will now be removed from the top of the carb will break tension. Then we'll pull out all four screws and put them off to the side and gently pry off this cover plate, which will be put off to the side. Now I'll very carefully peel off this gasket, doing it slowly and carefully to make sure none of it sticks to the cob. It's just easier to clean later. Taking a look from the inside of the cob, we could see the end of the needle is still seated right here. We're going to turn that screw now to remove it all the way and then I'll just give it a tap to knock it out and we could see the little dirt on there I don't know if that just got on after the fact and finally looking inside there's still a spring so I'm gonna use my pick to lift that spring out now flipping the cob over we're now gonna remove the bowl so I'm gonna break tension on all four of these screws right here using the flathead because they're really on there good I get a better grip with the flathead with the tension released, I'll use my other screwdriver just to unscrew all four of them. Then I lift the bowl off. 
and I store the screws in there, and it's very clean inside the bottom of this bowl, very nice. And we take a look at the float here, and we see screws, a plug, and a jet, and there's our float needle. And we're going to start taking all this apart, starting with the removal of the float with this screw that will loosen here so that we can remove the entire float assembly and needle. Comes right out just like that. Now I'll remove the main jet. And using a small fitted screwdriver, I loosen the pilot jet, which is under the main jet. Turn the cob upside down, I tap it to drop it out. And this is a really small jet, so it could become easily clogged. We can see that this one is open at least to some degree. Now I'll pull this plug, which is covering the main nozzle. We can see the nozzle protruding from inside the cob. We just push it, and it pops up, and we remove it. At this point, we've removed all the pieces from the cob that we're going to remove for cleaning, except for these O-rings that I've left in for now. But all the passages are clear and ready for cleaning. These nylon pieces are left on. There's no need to remove them. We could see that these holes are not blocked. We could look through them and see light shining through. This passage on cob 4 is blocked. It is unused. We do a quick inspection to see if there were any blockages as removed, and this piece does not have any blockages as I see it. This 114 jet, no blockages, and this 39 jet, no blockages. Though they could be slightly reduced from dirt, we see that this also has no blockages in it. So now we start our cleaning with brake cleaner, going through all the passages and blowing it out with air. On these smaller pieces, holding on to it with dear life, especially with the air so it doesn't shoot across the driveway and you buy a new one. This 39, spraying it through both sides and then blowing it out with air. And it's hard to see if the hole got bigger, but it didn't get smaller. Now we'll go through the cob. Every single passage, we're going to spray with cob cleaner. And I realize the O-rings are still in on both sides, and that's only because the O-rings have not been ordered yet, and I don't remove the parts until the new parts have been ordered. I can't stress enough the importance of this event because this is the primary reason for tearing down the cobs. Which we've seen the cleaner come through all the passages, we blow it out with air, and I want to feel the air come through these passages out another passage, and that tells me that there's no blockage, so I'm really taking my time with this, making sure everything's nice and clean too once we're done and do a visual inspection thereafter. And everything here looks really nice, like new. Four carb repair kits have been ordered. I would have preferred OE. These are Chinese, but this is what I got. We're gonna work with it. I'll try to unpack it without cutting the gaskets in half. We'll dump everything out onto the table, have a sort, open the smaller bag. There's nothing wrong with the OE needle, and given the choice, I'd rather use the OE needle than the Chinese one. So now I'll sort these small parts. The seal on this end cap looks original and petrified. It's just cracking into dust. I'm removing it now. Look at this, just coming off in pieces. And I'm just gonna clean out under there before we put on a new seal. And I take the fattest of the three seals in my bag. And carefully, I'm gonna work this around the top of the screw until it seats into position in the detent, like so. On the pilot screw, I've cut off that tiny O-ring, removing it now. Here it is. And I'm removing all the nastiness that was under that O-ring. And I'm now applying the new O-ring from the kit, just sort of rolling it down into that detent. It was very hard to focus the camera on this, I apologize. But I'm just rolling it down into the detent and then slides into place just like that. And then I'll place a new spring from the kit over this idle screw and focus my attention for a moment on cleaning up this part. Using a Dremel with a brush just to clean up all this nastiness right here. The piece cleaned up nicely, but now the end is gonna have to be prepared. So I'm sanding the pressed in the end with 400 grit sandpaper to rough it up. And now sanding the port on the carb to rough the mating surface up too. The carb will then need to be re-cleaned and blown out with air to remove any particles. At this time, I'm dropping in that 39 pilot jet. And with my small screwdriver, I'm going to turn it into full seat. 
And then I'm just going to give it a gentle nudge, just a little tighten, nothing crazy. And now the main nozzle, long side first, as we see here, drops right in. And we can see it from the bottom extending. The cap of the new O-ring is now placed over the nozzle and screwed in. We'll feel resistance from the O-ring and eventually it'll bottom out on the bottom of the nozzle and we're good. This is followed by the main jet which goes in last and I am taking note of the size of all these jets as they're reinstalled. But we're going to screw in the main jet and then once it's all the way in we'll just give it a little tighten and that's it. We have a new float in the kit, but I'd prefer OE if at all possible, and if you shake it, there's no fluid in the OE one, so I don't think it's leaking or anything, but we're going to try it out, and we're going to grab the pieces from the kit, and we're going to install the pin going through, and the float needle, placing it back into the carb, needle going in with the pin and the detent, Placing in the screw, we tighten the screw down, making it snug but not too tight, remembering it's going into aluminum. We do a quick check of the mechanical operation of the float. We see down and up, and down and up. We'll place it down now and take a measurement. The front lip should be 10 millimeters higher than the face of the carburetor in front of it. I have it set for 10 millimeters and I measure, and everything is pretty good up till about half a millimeter. This one is off by like five millimeters. The Chinese one is terrible. No surprise, we're gonna be staying with the original. I'll put it back now. Now the float bowl seal will be removed with a small screwdriver. This will all be cleaned out, but the drain seal needs to be removed too. So we're gonna pop that out now. The new seal is gently pressed into the cleaned up bowl. We could see little detents along the tracks that hold the seal into place. So I press it gently around those little detents And now the seal is held in. I then press the last remaining seal here for the bowl drain. Detents hold it in. Reinsert the screw. Screw it on. And then snug it down. There are two raised holes to position the carb to the bowl. We line it up as we merge the two together and hold it into place. Turning it over, I hold everything down and insert the screws. And with my flat head, I gently tighten all four of them down. I do one more audible check of the float to hear it open and close as I flip the carb upside down. Sounds good. The idle screw is then installed, dropping it into the port, pushing down and turning with a flat head screwdriver to start it. I then keep turning till I hit soft seat and then I stop. A new gasket is then used up top. Its shape only allows it to be inserted in one direction. I make sure it's laying perfectly flat around all these holes. And then I lay the cover, which only sits in one direction, carefully over that gasket till it's perfectly aligned. At which point I start the installation of the screws into the top cover, screwing them down, but not tightening them until all the screws are installed. Then with my flathead, all four are gently tightened down. I conduct one last inspection of this cob, which is now perfectly cleaned, except it needs new front and rear O-rings, and that one last piece needs to be repaired. That's all. The pieces outside have been drying in the sun, and now they're ready to come inside. And that concludes part two on this four-stroke Yamaha carburetor rebuild series for outboard motors. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>